she wanted to promote it. She wanted to sell it. She wanted to give it to the masses. And she continued to do that by hiring people to now sell door to door. You know, before you had Mary Kay, Avon, you had Poro, Poro College, right. Annie Malone. All right? right. And so what she did, what she did in her blueprint as you research everything um, is just immaculate. Hey, 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 I want to welcome everybody back to my own The Shoulders of Giants channel. I am Joseph Ward, the founder, author, and creator of Own The Shoulders of Giants, where we tell the stories of the sung, unsung heroes of the African diaspora. Our stories from our perspective right at your fingertips. And thank you to everybody who's been supporting Own The Shoulders of Giants. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, so we need y'all help to get us to 10,000, so make sure you this video like comment subscribe share do your thing because the algorithm thing we need y'all help we got to support the things that we do our own media so make sure you all do that because i'm going to continue to bring this history this information to y'all and have fun with it i want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in to my last interview with dr renoko rashidi thank you for that also everybody who tuned in to my interview with Miss Renee Jackson. Renee Matthews Jackson will be talking about the history of black theater. Thank you to everybody and to all my new subscribers and my new watchers. Welcome. We get it in here. We we talk about our history. We do our thing and we make sure that we know who we are, know where we come from because how can you really know where you're going if you don't know where you come from? So make sure you support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G Visit the website, got three books. Make sure you check out the books and check out all the free content I got on the website. But enough about that, enough about that because I want to get into because this is about to be good. So for all of my returning watchers for this channel, you should know who this lady is and you better know who this lady is, okay? Because there's videos on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> but about four or five years ago, I'm scroll, I'm, I'm doing my deep dive, my research, and I run across a lady named Annie Minerva Turnbull Malone. And so I'm peaked. My interest is peaked because the information that they're telling me is different from the information that I grew up knowing. So I was taught that Sarah Breedlove, aka Madam CJ Walker, basically was the architect of the black hair care industry. And then I find a bunch of information that's counter to that and it's giving credit to this woman named Annie Malone. So you, I'm curious, so I dive into the information and I'm looking and okay, I keep finding more and more and more sources that that is credible and that is actually supporting this information that I have. Lo and behold, the information is correct. So I put out my video, I put everything out, educating people. So for years, I thought I was the only one who knew about it, I thought I was special. Come to find out I'm not that special, but it's all good. <laughs> but I'm like many people. I thought I was the only one who. All right. So the Netflix movie happened. Y'all saw my video, my reaction to that. I told my piece. I did the first 10 minutes had my face like, what is this? Because my thing was, if you're going to, if we're going to tell our own stories, right? And we're going to introduce somebody from our history, tell it right. Tell it right. Right. So you see her face, right? <laughs> you see her face. So scrolling through Instagram one day and I see Sasha Turnbow. And I'm like, hold on, Sasha Turnbow. So I do a little more research and I find that she is the, correct me if I'm wrong, the great, great grandniece of Annie Malone. Is that correct? All right. All right. So, so I want to welcome to my channel. She's going to give us more information about Miss Annie Malone, as well as informa information about herself and the history of her family and how Annie Malone was able to impact people and how she's impacting people. So, Miss Sasha Turnbull, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Joseph. I'm so excited to be sharing her story and just continue to carry on her legacy. And so the way that this journey started was through a history project during Black History Month, you know, and that, that's the part about incorporating Black History Month yes. projects, okay? Because that led me to research more about her. I found books about her in my elementary school library. You know, wow. I got excited when I went home with my little book and I was like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's I think. Right. Um, because, because 
it's like in our family, it's just Aunt Annie. You know what I mean? We know who she was. You know what she did. When people do great things, you know what I mean? It's like when you grow up, it's like Blue Ivy's going to be like, yeah, my mom's Beyonce. You know? Exactly. It's very regular for the family, but for everybody else, it's made such a bigger deal. And that's why I get excited about talking about her because for me, it's a big deal because she's very new to me. I'm learning mm-hmm. and, and hearing stories from my elders and, and finding um, old artifacts you know, that they had passed down from their parents. And it's all very beneficial. And I feel like it's very important for us to also remember to want to trace back into our history to learn where we come from. You know, we can easily take a little cotton swab and send it off and have people tell us what we are. You know, that's that's simple. But right. it's harder to actually call your people, talk to yep. your people, yep. actually have them tell you their stories, their perspectives, because it's very different and it's very life changing. It healed me in different ways. It allowed me to see different perspectives and getting deeper into Annie Malone. Um, it's very symbolic for me because I'm the first female um, Turnbow left of my family. You know, all the other women. Um, got married and had to change their mm-hmm. last name. Well, they didn't have to change their last name, but they chose to change their did. last name. And, you know, their maiden names are still Turnbo, but, you know, uh, yes, one day, you know, I'm still debating. I'm going to hyphenate it, you know, because thinking about <laughs> right. this, I'm like, Turnbo so heavy. To, to just make it a middle <laughs> name is great, but, like, hyphenate, you know, Turnbo. Okay, That's what we're I was gonna thinking. Make that soon. But, That's what um, I was thinking. <laughs> yes. And so... <laughs> And so I do feel as though um, leading into Annie Malone, she started off um, wanting to just treat her and her sister's hair. You know, she learned Uh herbalism in the family, you know, through the family farm. And um, she was able to then get into chemistry. She didn't get to finish high school, but she was very invested into chemistry, started making different products, um, especially within the scalp, the skin. Um, And she was very big on like just hygiene overall. And right. um, as she dug deeper into that, um, she wanted to promote it. She wanted to sell it. She wanted to give it to the masses. And she continued to do that by hiring people to now sell door to door. You know, before you had Mary Kay, Avon, you had Poro, Poro College, right. Annie Malone. All right? right. And so what she did, what she did in her blueprint as you research everything um, is just immaculate because she did it with such style and grace. When you look at every photo and you see all the women standing there, you know, with their fur or their beautiful hats mm-hmm. or their jewelry, you know, she was very big on jewelry. She gave, you know, um, uh, graduates and members um, of the college diamond rings, you know, wow. um, and different and, and large tokens like that. And she was just very, very elegant and poised. And I really love just how classy she was. So. You're right. The Netflix series, it was frustrating. Um, I can honestly say that I watched it, mm-hmm. turned it off, came back to it a couple of days later. I did too. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> um, at the end of the day, and one thing that people will understand when they communicate with me that I try to help them understand is that, you know, you can never say, well, why are you taking this so personally? Excuse me. At the end of the day, when it's family, it's always personal. People, it I is. know people who get beat up for talking about somebody's mother, okay? Right. For calling somebody's sister off the name, okay? So you think that you're going to get on a worldwide platform and d- like publicly disrespect my aunt? <laughs> you know, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. It's not. It's it's not anything subtle, and it's everything personal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Um, it's something that I'm very passionate about. And that's that's also another thing. It's never aggressive. It's always passionate. Because, right. you know, she did what she did. And I'm not saying she was perfect, but a little tidbit that she had with a woman in like her, her mid-20s to early 30s, not very relevant when you die at like 70, 80, you know? And that's what's that's the real perspective. That's how the family looks at it. That's why when people mm-hmm. talk about a Madam C.J. Walker, I'm like, but when did she pass away? 1919? Oh, okay. And he passed away in 1957 because my grandpa was definitely at that service. So at the end of the day, like even her personal assistant that, you know, I met, he came mm-hmm. around in like 1947. He was like, you know, it's so funny how people talk about a Madam Walker because she was nowhere around when we were doing, when we were working. So, right. you know what I mean? And, and, you know, people had to go back and then understand, oh yeah, because, you know, her estate carried on different things, but mm-hmm. they built up. 
a whole thing. And she was a very glamorous woman. So at the end of the day, when you're willing to flaunt your riches, right. you know, it can always come off as you are the wealthiest. So, but when so you're me, building, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was just, I was just gonna say so, just so we can get a kind of a time perspective on it. About what, about what date uh, did she begin her um, her hair care business? It, like, what time did what year did she start rather? So she started making the products around like nineteen oh two. So okay. early 1900s, you know, she started making a lot of things. Well, she she was doing things in the kitchen in like the um, like the late 1890s, you know okay. what I'm saying? But officially, she, like, we can say 1902 was more official um, because she was in the St. Louis World Fair, the 1904 World Fair. And that's where she showcased a lot of her stuff for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so since then, she was selling products, marketing products, hiring people to sell products. And then she built her school. But okay, so we say the school is worth a certain amount. It's worth half a million dollars. Okay, five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Great. So then you can then include the annex for the garage. You can include a hospital, a laundry unit, a seamstress to make the the outfits and you know the uniforms for everybody. And then you have a whole theater for performances, so right. that you know we can have entertainment. So at the end of the day, when the building is that much plus all the extra, by 1918, you're going to tell me that you're doubting a million, even though half her buildings were burned down by Jewish people. She even had to get rescued out of her own home because okay. people tried to burn her out of her own home. See, I that I didn't know. But, I, you know, I always say... I'm always saying because I, I've heard a lot of stories throughout history. So my saying is if you build it, you must protect it, especially for us as black people. So I didn't know that the the buildings were burnt down by by Jewish people. Wow. The build yes, the buildings were were burned down. And um, you know, she had to escape overnight at one point. She had to pack up 150 people from St. Louis, bust them to Chicago and start over. You know what I mean? Like people just don't do that. And mind you, just like how, you know, everyone thought she was born in 1869, they're also thinking she's like eight years older than she really is. So, mm -hmm. no, you're not taking directions from a, a 40 or 30 year old woman. You're taking directions from a 25 year old, 35 year old woman. Wow. You, so do you see the perspective? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm 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 over here, you know, because by 1907. You know, she would have just turned what is that 30 yes because she, she was born in 77 87 90 right mm -hmm. so by 30 you're on a huge platform selling all these things you have all these people doing all this stuff by 40 you're building the buildings okay right and then there's a huge discrepancy now because once you have buildings once you have masses of students now you have people coming after you but yes. see, what I, I don't want people to get confused is my story is never about just one black woman. Because when we pull out my book, when you see my receipts, when you see, and it's not even about my receipts, it's all public knowledge. I'm just doing mm -hmm. the research. Exactly. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you see the court records of the, the countless women that she went to court with, you know, the company she went to, she went to court with, you know what I mean? I even saw mm -hmm. a court case with P&G. You know what I mean? Everybody knows PNG. Everybody uses PNG products. Everybody right. knows them. They, right. they, she even had a whole thing with, with some of her soaps. So it's like at the end of the day, she went to war with the world. And that's the power that I want people to respect about her story. It's not about some back and forth, who was first, who was second, who was third. It doesn't matter. She laid out a blueprint and pioneered something for the world. She went to Europe to find that hot comb, widen the tooth a little bit, patent it, and patent that first hot comb. She did something right. for our people. So while everyone likes to talk about first, second, third, last, I, I like I feel you. You know what I mean? Of course, you already know I stand at the top with my aunt, but that's <laughs> not the focus of the story. And that's and that's my focus of the story is that she broke molds and she she just overcame the unthinkable, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Any problem that was presented, she knew how to conquer it. And that's what's powerful because at 25, at 35, at 45, when you have not only, you know, a whole other race of people attacking you, 
when you have your own people attacking yeah. you, when you have your husband blackmailing you, wow. come on now. So, okay, so because I knew that she had to copyright some of her products because of people trying to steal her stuff. Now, the information I had didn't really get specific on who these individuals were. I know um, the the way I presented it, some people just made up stories like I was trying to say, Madam C.J. Walker, but so you were saying it was a whole plethora of people who was coming after her products that she had to protect it from. Yes, and this is, so just to give you guys like a perspective, right? Cause more people can, you know, when you correlate it with like maybe like the music industry, think about how common of a beat or a song you hear and how you hear about somebody going to war or a lawsuit or something because it's too similar. Mm -hmm. So back in that time period, when you're doing things like that, it's like, <laughs> she's the only one you can be copying from. So <laughs> yes, she went to war with the world because no one else is doing it, how she was doing it. And she had a seal. She did. She had, she had mm -hmm. a coral seal so that you knew if you purchased a canister, because that's the other thing too. It wasn't just about people using the products. Some people just wanted to use the canister and put right. their products in the canister because they knew that that nicer canister would sell for more than the than the cheaper canister they would get. Right, right. And so that that's a different perspective too. Sometimes it's not always about the formula; it's the packaging too that they'll always try to take. So she she has to fight both sides. And so it's it's the fact that she kept conquering, and she was classy about it. And one thing that people always say is you never saw, you know, she always had a poker face. You never saw the emotion. She mm -hmm. was fighting through a divorce with her husband and you wouldn't know. You know, if she was uncomfortable in a room. She would stand up, she'd walk out, she would leave. Mm -hmm. But that was about it. Like that, that was as dramatic. I thought she's not making a scene. She doesn't cause discomfort or friction. You know, she's very methodical with her words. And, you know, she doesn't take a lot of shit. Right. You know, because she's a Leo, mind you. Don't right. don't underestimate her. She is a Leo. Uh -huh. Okay, August 9th, honey. All right. Well, you're not yes, gonna do that. But but it's at but at the end of the day, um as a black woman, I'm motivated because if she could build the empire she built, I'm already just excited for what I am going to do because I, I follow just like her. You know, I love to write, I'm into chemistry, you know, I love That's chemistry. Cool. I make products. I want, I'm I'm going to start school to do dermatology when I finish my last semester at Howard. So I I love skin, I love hair, I love all of it. And so that's to great. to feel like that's also a part of my journey is very humbling. And so being able to tell her story, I'm going to correct her story. I'm going to live, you know, this 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 chapter is going to be revolved around her and uplifting her. But once I'm ready to be, you know, Dr. Turnbow with my own practice and I have my products and I'm treating my people, you know, and people ask me about Annie Malone, I'm be like, um, yes. did you buy a book? Yes. <laughs> did you did you call somebody? Because um I want people to know like there's many books. Like, I have I have a couple right here. Like my cousin wrote this book and then mm -hmm. this is another book by um uh, by John Winfield, great author. Um and, and there's a lot of great information out there about her. And so at the end of the day, um, even though my book, my book will come out later this year, my book is not out yet. I want people to know that you will always be able to find the correct concept, but are you willing to accept it? You know, right. are you willing to receive, <laughs> okay? Right. Because that's the next frustrating thing. When I present something new, because one thing that people, you know, don't know that's very challenging for me. It's like, I'm I'm kind of rewriting this right now. I'm making a lot of people change their textbooks and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, kind of figure some things out. It's a lot. I'm, I'm challenging a whole series based on a national or a worldwide platform, you know, because you got your, their perspective is what's deemed as accurate, but I'm here to say, well, I don't know if I would agree with that because even in my perspective, I would have done better due diligence to Madam T.J. Walker because I feel like she even accomplished more in her lifetime than just bickered with my aunt. You know exactly. If 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 you want to be honest, I'm not even here to 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 say it's anybody's fault. I just feel like the writers, and that that's what I go for because I have um I have had communications with Madam Walker's granddaughter, Lilia Bundles, and um even though she does um. She does feel 
her own perspective and her own opinion, she didn't want the forefront of the movie to be such conflict. And mm -hmm. so I do feel as though we could have told the story and, you know, had Madam Walker learning some stuff, quick little tidbit at school, and then she went about her business. You know, because right. I heard she was going to be in the series. I thought it was going to be a quick little 10 minute, 20 minute cameo. But she's in like everything. You have her chasing you. You have her doing yeah. all types of stuff. And in the end, yes. you come out and it's like, oh, wait, but I stole everything. And I'm like, all right, this was psychologically draining because I don't know what I was supposed to receive. Was that, that was look, that was my frustration because I'm not even in the family. <laughs> right. I felt I felt like I felt like I was in the family. Like because you, you, I was sitting on my couch, and the first day, the first episode comes on the first ten minutes, and I'm just like, hold up. So I'm I'm flipping back through my information. I'm like, hold up. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not crazy because. If you're going to, if we're, once again, if we're going to tell our own stories, tell it correctly. And also, that was an opportunity to show how black women work together to be, to be able to build the, the black hair care industry. Oh. Yeah. I, I found. Because that's, that's what she did. Because that's what she did. Look, <laughs> I, I, I found, I found information about a lady named Viola Desmond, who basically pioneered the hair care industry, the black hair care industry in Canada. Okay. Viola, Viola Desmond was a student at at one of Madam C.J. Walker's schools. Okay. We, Madam C.J. Walker was a student at the Port Royal Institute. So we get, so three women who are responsible for the foundation of the black hair care industry that we have today. The story could have went like something like that, but so that that's why I feel like right. it's important to have people like you on the baby tell the story correctly. Because and that's and that's all I want to tell it correctly. I'm not here to to diminish anything. I don't care. And people who know me and that's like, come on now, the woman is called a, a friend to all mankind. They put that on her obituary. Okay, let me tell you something. She wasn't just named or deemed to be a friend to everyone just for fun. She was genuinely an authentic person. Mm -hmm. And so to diminish her character like this, like you think that because you're going to put a little fake name on it and sprinkle something on it that we're going to take it for? No. Mm -mm. Right. Come on. Right. What? Even when they put the black nose on Rudolph, Rudolph knew it was hoax. <laughs> okay, took that nose off. I'm Rudolph, honey. Okay, <laughs> exactly. It, don't, it doesn't work like that. You, you can't call it something when you're trying to portray it as something else. And they knew they couldn't use her actual name because, honey, I would have been <laughs> right. in a whole other right. place right now. <laughs> right. But uh, it would have uh, been a whole other situation <laughs> if you get into defamation. No, That's yeah, right. no, I'm with you, but. I, I'm, another problem, and I, I I understand why they couldn't use the correct name, but I had to when in talking to some of my friends, I had to let them know, okay, that's a fictional name that they've used, and then I'm like, well, read this story and read this story so you will know because it's like we got some we got some excellent black people, black women in our history, and just tell it correctly, just tell the story right. That's exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, and that's. And, and it's even sad because you know what also happened that really shocked me is that other legacies came into my DMs because I guess they even tried to include tidbits of like other important people and mm -hmm. like they didn't do that correctly. Or somebody was like, they tried to portray my aunt in this or they tried to portray my uncle in this and that wasn't right. And I'm like, oh my God. And so right. to me, I get I get overwhelmed because at the end of the day, I feel a certain way because, you know, just to keep it plain and simple, you have someone like Casey Lemons, who's from St. Louis, you know, mm -hmm. you're from St. Louis and you think that this is how St. Louis wants to be honored with this woman when you guys hold a parade for her every year. Okay. Right. The biggest May Day parade that puts so much into y'all city. Okay. Put so much into the Annie Malone Children and Family Service Center to help so many people in that community. You know nothing about it, and you don't even care about acknowledging that woman. It's 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 yeah. it doesn't make sense to me right. to be from a certain place. Like I'm I'm from the DMV. You know what I mean? So I couldn't imagine putting on something about somebody like I don't know a film, including maybe like a Chuck Brown, like a Go Go guy. You know what I'm saying? Or like like what? Yeah. And it's yeah. just like and it's like I disrespect 
certain things about his legacy. And I'm like, but I know what Gogo has done for my life. I know what that music has done for me. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. So yeah. it's, like, it's like for her, it's like, come on, just as a community, as a philanthropist, as a black woman who who is familiar, you know, I feel like I choose to be on the side that wants to be authentic. I choose to be on the side that's going to say no if it's not correct. Mm -hmm. And all I can stand on the side is with it'll be done by any means because a turbo is involved. And that's yes. just what we believe. I don't, yes. I, I don't bow down. When I feel certain about something, it's going to get done. And so that is why my family knows, like, everybody always congratulates me as, as, as I post different things or I release a new interview or something. And they're like, you're the perfect one to do this because we know emotionally we couldn't handle this. Like, <laughs> but, but you are. That's, that's another thing, too. It can it can get very it can get very emotional because it's also triggering. You know, these are the wounds of my people who suffered from this. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's the fallouts. You know what I mean? It, it's it's deeper. It's the it's the conversations that were had that broke apart certain people that and then how we had to come back together and different things that just people, especially black families, know we all struggle with. Right. So it's like, right. imagine you choosing an elder to not talk about how easy is it going to be be for you to not talk about that elder and then communicate with everybody in your family to now get information on that elder how easy is that for you when everybody's right. busy everybody has their own time and to me yes i'm a beautiful person and people favor me to to the world yes y'all love my aunt but to us it's aunt annie and cousin sasha mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right right but but it's it's humanizing as well though because you you are you are whole human <laughs> beings right and so we need to we need to see y'all we see what we see but very you're a whole regular, human being very regular. And, and be allowed <laughs> to be a human being at the same time so so speaking of that let's get into yeah. how generous annie malone was because that is one of the things that i did learn is she spent a lot of time giving back to other people, helping other people. And she even used her own money out of her own pocket to help other people. So can you elaborate a bit more on that? Yes, she was very, very, very gracious with her money. That's the reason even why when people ask about an estate, um, there's, there wasn't much left after she passed because she right. donated so much of her money. She sponsored um, two students at every HBCU for a certain amount of time. Wow. Um, like during that time period, you know, um, and I, um, I'm doing research to just figure out like how many HBCUs actually existed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know it was like, I feel like at least well over like 50 to 60 HBCUs, like it was a lot and to cover their full tuition. And then she donated the first 25,000 to start Howard University Medical School. I saw that. So I saw that. I, I'd be looking at him like, um, come on, Howard. <laughs> okay. I think, yeah. I think I can have a couple of discounts. We did. <laughs> right. Okay. I, hello. But um, yes, and she did a lot with Tuskegee. She did a lot with a lot of HBCUs. Um, she's an honorary Zeta. She she's very big in St. Louis. You know, the um, Annie Malone Children and Family Service Center wasn't originally named after her. You know, they chose to name it after her because she was so active with the orphanage and and just so gracious with the donations of the children. And, um, you know, even like with the family, it was it was very beautiful. She would always um, send gifts and do different things. And she was just very generous. Um, so even when she had to pack up everybody and you know buy a new building set everybody up you know what i mean it's not easy to do that it's not easy to ask your people right. to do that right you know and the fact that that many people trusted her that's the thing you can try to say as many things that people can try to say as many things as they want about my aunt but the amount of people that trust her or trusted her is what what speaks for itself the right. amount of people that knew her that are alive to this day that defended their honor you know i when i go to st louis i have people that come up to me and they say if your aunt would have never opened that school my great grandmother would have never went there opened her salon to support our family for the next three generations mm -hmm. or if your aunt wouldn't have donated to this orphanage you know i wouldn't have able to have gotten these, gotten these resources to not go off to college to not be this huge businessman right I know people who are really at a rock bottom and, and say that their foundation was off of what my aunt laid. That means everything to me. 
because I'm yes. working hard for something. We're all working hard for something. And at the end of the day, you know what you're working hard for. And you're not going to allow anybody to diminish your name. And your mm-hmm. people aren't going to allow anybody to diminish your name. And so right. that is why I stand so strong on what I do. Because she did what she did for her people. She was very generous. She donated so much. She only had 100000 left in her estate that she gave to my grandfather and siblings. 100000 from millions. Right. Because at the end of the day, she donated a lot. She lost a lot of it to the IRS because of tax records. Because because during that time, they were taxing black people for the dumbest of things, mm-hmm. and they tried to say she owed so much money. And then she was divorcing her husband, who also right. blackmailed her. And then people were after her husband too. Okay, you had Mary McLeod Bethune and other people trying to stick people on her. Like, hello, uh, don't be messing with Annie. That's the thing. Like, she had powerful people. Okay, she she put funds to help start organizations like NAACP and. And so many other things. Like she, you know, she was just so selfless. And right. so I feel like that's that's the power in her story. That she was just a selfless like person, selfless being. And um uh that's that's one thing I feel as though when you're taking something from any of this or whatever whatever you do or don't take, um my sound bite, make sure you understand Annie Malone was a very classy and respectful woman. Okay. At the end of the day, I was like, get that out there because the, like I said, the series tried to paint a very bad image of her and it's frustrating, even with the colorism, that's hard, you know, because our family member and people who are black, you know, sometimes you got the light skin sister, sometimes you got Mm -hmm. the dark skin sister, sometimes Mm -hmm. you got the light skin cousin, sometimes you got the dark skin cousin and we're all the same people. Right. So to say this about her and then I see my family, I'm like... I'm not even believing, believing believing any of this. And then when I'm reading her letters and I'm seeing her students, I'm not believing any of this. Right, right. So it, it's frustrating because it's like you do this for entertainment, but who are you trying to entertain? Who do you want to appease? I guess because to me, I'm not. It's it's not humorous to me. It's not it's not funny. It's not right. dramatic. You know, this isn't my reality TV because to me, it's it's supposed to be historical. And I love Octavia Spencer. I love Blair Underwood. I love Tiffany Haddish, even Carmen and Django, the women who play her. I love yeah. all of them. So the fact that it just, and it's crazy because even Carmen posted Annie. I, and I'm, I saw she posted Annie. And I was like, I'm, I'm glad you did your research. And you know, you did your role, but you didn't play my heart. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I you know. played her. So thank you for posting her, cutting her. <laughs> You played who you played, but that wasn't her. Yeah. So you ain't do her no due diligence. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, I went did. to her Instagram Like, like none of her page. mannerisms were my aunt's aannerisms. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, I, I went to her Instagram <laughs> page. No, you could I, I went to her Instagram page after she she posted what she posted. And trying. I felt like she was trying to cover it up. Oh, yeah. uh, or clean it, clean it up a bit. But I was was funny. I was listening to a, a lecture on YouTube earlier today, and it was talking about how s- sometimes when black people choose to play certain roles, you know, there's a conscious decision that goes into playing the role when you have to read the script, and especially somebody historical when you can do your research. So a conscious decision was made to play this role and to make this happen, and so that's why I don't. To me, on the on the back end, conscious decisions has to be made to say, "All right, that was that. This is the real story, and let's make sure people really understand who this woman was and the impact exactly. she truly had on America." And the, the there would be no black haircut industry without her. Right, and I feel as though, and I do agree with that. You get to choose what story you want to tell. At the end of the day, we all get up. We choose our jobs. We choose what cars we like, what clothes we like. We choose what we're going to read. We choose what we're going to post. And people to the day, they choose what events they want to go to. They choose who they're going to support. So you can choose who you want to portray and what you want to do. But all I know is no one has ever accurately portrayed my art. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, when people always say, well, what would you, would you have anything to say? And I'm like, well, I want to know, well, what would y'all do differently? Because. I don't have nothing to say about it. You know, if that's how y'all felt Madam C.J. Walker's life was, well, I can see why there's so much animosity. I can see why there's so much tension. Because that's how y'all, that's how y'all feel. Right. But y'all don't know that we know all the cases that Annie had to face. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Madam Marco was worried about Andy. Andy was worried about Sally, Billy, Joe, Ma- like, come on now. Right. Are you kidding me? Right. So it was just like, it's funny because if that's the highlight, if that's what you want to highlight, I'm glad that that is what you guys feel was accurate. But right. I hope that as books are being rewritten and new projects are being created, that perspective shifts because. Yes. That perspective is very toxic. And like I said, they could have done her better due diligence. I think that we could have saw a better story of what Madam T.J. Walker did without it being such dramatic antics. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just my aunt. There were other scenes that were very dramatic throughout the series that didn't correlate with history. You know what I mean? Like, So we're not yeah. even going to act like it was just the Addy Monroe thing. There were a couple of things that were scattered throughout the series that was very questionable. And it's just like, if this is what y'all like as entertainment, so be it. But <laughs> it's not right. going on in my books as like, you know, a, a standpoint that's like, oh yeah, my children have to see this. It's not like a roots. Like people say, oh yeah, Alex Haley roots. Everybody got to see that. You know what I mean? It's not that vibe, sis. Exactly. Know? Exactly. So, so, let's, <laughs> so let's go back a bit. <laughs> you, you talked about her going to Germany to, to create the hot comb. Correct. Um, I want. I will not say Germany. Okay. I will say Europe. You okay? As, somewhere in Europe. I confirm. Yes, as I confirm the specific um city, but um because I I my research said France, so that's okay. why I, you're saying Germany, but I researched France, so okay. I'm I'm gonna say Europe. Okay. I got you. I got and you. And she found a man who had a hot comb. She she took that same design, but then widened the tooth and patented, you know, a hot comb that was suitable for thicker textured hair. You know, okay. it wasn't for fine hair. You know what I mean? So that is then where you get the hot comb, you heat it up on a stove, you got your your bacon fat, uh, not your bacon, sorry, not bacon fat, goose fat. Sorry, yes. you use a lot of goose fat. <laughs> yes. And different things like that, and you know, you got, you know, what I'm saying they be people, people be knowing like, come on, them edges. Anybody who's ever gotten their hair laid, <laughs> girls who do the silk press, anything, man, you know about having to touch right. them edges and sometimes heating a hot comb. You know, maybe not not today, girls who use a flat iron, and I respect it. But um, back in my grandmother's day, Eddie Malone's day, you you didn't have no choice. You used a hot comb, and then you had your curling iron that sat on the stove, and you did the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And yes, she she so she was very global, you know, and she wasn't just in America. Um, I have cousins um, from you know Bermuda who even say they have things from Annie because she taught just all up in the islands. So she was worldwide, um, and that's that's what's so so dope about her. I'm like, what what was it like to travel back then? You know, that's, exactly. That's, I love when I see the letters because just seeing like, you know, how they use the typewriters and the stamps and different things like mail is so different today than, you know, mail back then. And I, mm-hmm. I love the comparisons. So just to know that she was so, so versatile and traveling like that, like that's like me, like I love to travel. Um, I've been so many places. And, um, you know, even when people say like, we look alike, you know, hello, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna deny it. I do feel like her and her energy does shower over me because we are, um, I, I do feel like I am a reflection of her in different mm-hmm. ways, even like how she started doing things with her hair care at the age of 22 in Brooklyn, Illinois. I started doing my things at 22 in Brooklyn, New York. But right. it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's very weird, but it's very, it's very funny. Um, no, because that's... I, I don't, um, I don't know. I, I think everything's dusted. I think everything's met with the purpose. And there's mm-hmm. also a reason why I'm the first girl as well. You know what I mean? You have my grandfather, you have my great grandfather, which is Andy's brother. You have my grandfather who only had two boys. And then, you know, only one of those sons, my father had kids, my uncle didn't have kids. And I'm the first girl, you know what I mean? And then yeah. I have a younger brother. So it's like, it's like male, 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 and then me. Right. And I feel like that that's also destined as well. To for me to be the one to tell the story, and I look just like her. Then I'm, you know, every everything is already written, and I'm here walking by faith. So I'm very grateful for for people like you who are interested in her story because, you know, like I said, sometimes you know my family loves hearing about 
family, but like we talk mm-hmm. about other things. So you guys want to talk about my family? Let's do it. It's, it's sometimes yeah. it can be my favorite topic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because, exactly. Because it's um it's comforting for me. It's uplifting for me, and it's very like, it's very healing for me as well. And so I really enjoy that. And. And it's a dope perspective. It's a dope legacy. I wouldn't be able to carry on her legacy and even break through what she did. Like she had the millions by this age. I'm like, bet, let's get there. Because yeah. I want to make sure that not only me doing it by telling my story, but me doing it with my dermatology. I want to have spas like all over the world. She had pearl colleges all over the world. I want to have spas and different things and, and medical practices all over to treat people's skin holistically and mm-hmm. have people understand the benefits of, you know, great. Skin, great hair, thick nails come from internal cleansing. And, you know, you can excel internally to externally, you know. And so I do feel as though um, that spirit also has carried through me because a- Annie was not like a crazy eater, you know. Mm, okay. She was a very light eater. And, um, yeah, no, I and like I said, it's, it's, it's very interesting the little things that people tell you about her. You know, like that was one of the things her personal assistant would always say, like, uh, well, not always say, but he has mentioned. Um, you know, dinner time, you know, she would eat very light, you know what I mean? She had like mm-hmm. like a, a potato and you know, a baked chicken and like a, a dinner roll and you know, maybe right. like lemonade. You know, she wasn't like a heavy drinker, you know. Right. So she she loved fresh lemonade. So okay. little things like that. It's like I love fresh lemonade. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's the little things where you get excited because um you wanna make them feel like you say you wanna humanize them. Yeah. So to all of us, she's an icon. To me, she's my celebrity. But, you know, I want her to feel as natural. I want her to be our Annie, you know, yes. so that yes. I can think, OK, if she was here right now or if she's coming to me right now, what, what energy would she give me? You know, because sometimes or at least when I would get started, I would always have like this nice proper. Hello, I'm Sasha Turnbull. This is what <laughs> I do. But it's like I have to be authentic. I have to be real with you guys because this, it's not this is you. This yes. is because this is a ama- your energy. Look, you are the perfect person to carry this legacy on because the passion, <laughs> the passion that you have for it, like the fact that you are just as excited as I am about this, and the 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 passion and and the way you bringing it, so many more people are going to learn about her, and so many more people are going to be able to really see the real story of Andy Malone because the way that you're bringing it and your energy, like don't change for nobody. Be you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Yes, because that's 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 the biggest part for me to to understand as I'm transitioning to be more more open and and abrupt with everybody. Because like I said, you can get emotional, and so yes. you think that the way to protect yourself from not getting emotional is to just be very bland, but. When you don't give any emotion, the people don't really feel you. So it's like I'm like I can't do that. I have to I have to talk with my hands. Sometimes I roll my neck a little bit. You know, people yeah. are gonna have to learn this black history. You know how yes. black people talk. It, you okay? don't get it how you get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that is but, cool. And, and that's that's how she was. She she was very real though. And so. Just like how we we are building this friendship, she has many friends. I have many friends. I have a beautiful network of people, and I just love people. That's the thing about me. I'm I am a Libra, okay, and mm-hmm. I don't know how familiar you are with astrology, but Libras are one of the least confrontational. We like okay. duck and cover from anything confrontational, okay? Like we're not scary now. We're very bold. Like we'll face things head on. We'll always be on the front line, but right. like, we prefer to always be at peace with everybody. So if I can make friends with the next person because that'll be for the best interest of me, let's do it. You know, exactly. I don't want to be closed off with my information because I feel like it needs to be for me. I'd rather share my information, build, you know, my Annie Malone family because I feel like this is all ours, our Annie. You know what I'm saying? We call her Annie yes. Malone, but at the end of the day, Aaron Malone is not really our favorite. So we can just stick with Aunt Annie. Okay, she's firm, bro. Yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> you know when your you cousin, go. you know, you know, you know when your your, your auntie married an uncle that you didn't really like, and you had to tell him get rid of uncle. Uh, you know that you know, that was the name, but we're gonna stick with the real name that we like. So. I was saying she turned bow. Okay, <laughs> there you go. But um, but yes, I want everybody to resonate with Aunt Annie and understand it. that that can be your Aunt Annie too. Vibe with her, you know when you see her face. 
a lot of people are captivated. You know, you mm. feel like she's speaking to you. You feel comfort in her eyes when you look at her. That's that's what we need to feel about our leaders. That's how yes. we need to feel about those that, you know, we call heroes or those we call icons. You want to look at those fo- those photos and be empowered years after they are gone. Yep. And yep. that is the beauty of her. Everybody, everybody has this reaction. And that is why I carry her legacy with such grace and class and poise as she did because at the end of the day, Hello, I can't I can't come you know out here and be and be acting wild on Aunt Amy's name. You know the <laughs> turnbull's gonna wrap me up. Okay, right now I got you. I got you. <laughs> you have them calling you like um. All right, Tasha, what you doing? I know you got excited, <laughs> yeah. but um, you need you to dial down a little bit. <laughs> right. <you want. laughs> but but yeah, no, but. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> But but I do I do get excited and like I say I'm I'm always willing to share and I do want to have you know big you know like the Brown and Brother hair shows I I yep. want to do big you know um shows for to, to honor beauticians like Annie Malone would you know like the mm-hmm. World Fair or something so I'm hoping as her legacy grows you know we can have people come set up booths and sell their products and different things like yeah. that for our people by our people because that's what we need. And at the end of the day, my main focus as well is getting hair care back in the black, okay? Yes. Hair yes. care is in a whole, we, we done gave it to a whole other sector of the world, okay? The Eastern <laughs> world runs hair care. And they shouldn't. We okay. created it. Let's get it back. Yeah. Oh my God, because it's like, man, it's crazy, the Asians, Asia, the Asians are powerful, boy. Yeah, they oh are. my goodness. They that are. whole country of Asia, the whole country of Asia, they just manifest so much. And like it's it's beautiful, but it started in the black. We're gonna get it back in the black. There okay. You go. Because guess what? We do it phenomenally. I love how they do it, but we know how to just put a little something on it that just makes it pop better, you know. They learn from <laughs> us. They have to learn from us. So hey, might as well bring it back to the source. The blueprint. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if you bring it back to the source, everybody gets the best product at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I'm mm-hmm. I've been using a lot of black owned things since um I've always loved the black owned everything, um, from attending Howard and just being at HBCU. So um it didn't really get amplified last year, but I feel like since society made black, like kind of highlighted black things a little bit more, it was easier to find black owned products last yeah. year. So I can say that honestly, now I have been buying, you know, like, and I'm not saying just like clothes or jewelry, I'm saying black owned things like toilet paper, hand soap, like black owned things that people don't think about that are everyday necessities mm-hmm. that we can buy from black people, from black manufacturers. So right. that is something that we are going to soon tap into. So we can have black farmers markets, you know what I mean? So that black people can bring in all of their stuff and we can keep money in our communities because yeah. I feel like that is the first way, you know, people always say, okay, well, you got, you know, we're, we're filled with the ghettos and all types of stuff and whatever. Okay. So let's shift. We got to get out of it. We got to shift, but everybody has to find the one thing they're good at and then fight to be the best yes. at it. Yes, but, but but the one thing you can do is that if you're not the best at it, you can't try to take out them. You have to now right. try to sit next to the best and learn and get there. You know what there I'm you saying? Go. Yep. But a lot of people they they just want to be followers. You know, some people they need um they need to go to a job. Mm-hmm. They find comfort in you know something like already pre written instruction right. type of vibe, and nothing is wrong with that. Because we need people who are willing to work. But when some of us can tap into that ability to create and really just have faith in the power of creating, it's very it's scary. But when you can have that faith, you can just go so far, you know? And I'm learning that. You know, I'm, I'm learning that. <laughs> it's in our DNA. And, and it's, I understand why, why you are saying that because it's literally in your dna it's in all of us but it's literally in your bloodline that you can track <laughs> back because that's exactly what annie did she created she created yes. her own she used her <laughs> imagination she used her ingenuity her intelligence created 
a whole a whole industry a whole platform and empower others and as you can see around the world like i have a i have a friend from st louis he's from the st louis area and when i first started talking about annie malone yeah. she got excited she's like oh yeah she did this and she did this and we talk about this in st louis and i'm i'm from florida i'm from florida so i went to famu so down here we that all they taught okay. us was okay. <laughs> all they taught us was was madam cj walker and it, like i say shout out to her and kudos to her and everything that she built but let's 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 make sure that we're getting these stories out so everybody can know and that's another reason why i want to have you on here i create this whole platform so we share these stories with as many people as possible we're not letting nobody else do it we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it right so right yeah. so so let me ask so let me let me ask you about your book and you don't have to get all the way into it, but okay. kind of give us a little bit of information about your book and kind of a uh, time when it may come out so we can buy the book. Yes, so the book is going to be centered around just Annie's life. Okay, so I'm gonna do um, a two part series. First book is gonna be just solely on her life. The second, the second book is going to be the in-depth of the college, okay? And so it's going to be broken up, um, you know, just by decade. And you're okay. going to travel through every decade, see what she went through, how she faced it, and not only what happened publicly, you know, what happened in the family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to incorporate, you know, newspaper clippings that the family received, family letters, you know, family photos. You know, I have my grandfather and his siblings in Poro, you know, and them running the college, like they're like they're grown and they're just they're like in taking their business photo and it's just beautiful, it's powerful, you know. And so um, the book will it's planning to be coming out da -da -da -da, her birthday August 9th, All right. Okay. So okay. I'm getting everything together for August 9th, and I would love to be in St. Louis. I'm trying to see um, where in St. Louis I can be if I can be at the Andy Malone Children and Family Service Center or maybe somewhere else. Um, so the day, um, the day of the book release party, I guess, or when that would take place is definite, but the release date, um, is, is looking to be on her birthday, August 9th. Um, and that is, that's something that I want to do to kind of wish her happy birthday and mm -hmm. put that out there as like my gift to her, um, after, cause she passed away 57. So we're going on like 60 years of her being gone. Okay. And so I want that to be something that's like, you know, it's been a long time coming, but happy birthday. And so I feel like right. releasing it on her birthday will always be special for me. Um, and so I'm going to make sure that, you know, everything I'm, with the pandemic, you know, I know it'll definitely be digital with the pandemic. I'm trying to make sure everything can be printed in time so that I can get it to St. Louis. I'm going to ship it to somebody that I know there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll travel there, like get all the books there, because I want to do a book signing. I want to do a whole thing. Um, so we're we're gonna keep our fingers crossed, okay? But yes, yeah, so fall, early fall, late summer, early fall okay. is our time frame, okay? And I'm very excited because I've been working on the book for a long time now. Um, the only thing that I feel like has been delaying me is just um, I feel like I wanted to add more family touches to it. I feel like I had a lot of public research. I feel like I had kind of the same story that everybody had or like similar stories, but I wanted to make it more personal. So me adding the family aspect will be a beautiful touch. And right. I think that'll allow people to humanize her. Like you say, I, I love that you use that because I feel like people look at her as such an icon that they don't see her as, as a person who actually right. faced day-to-day -day things. And so um, I'm very excited because, you know, a lot of books have been written and some are being rewritten, but um, no book has fully hit the mark to to be like, oh, this is the one. You know, okay. there are segments in um, Black Fortunes that was really good. Segments in Black Fortunes that was really good. A Friend to All Mankind is phenomenal. I love all of the books. Um, I just want to tell my story from my perspective and, mm -hmm. like I say, organize it with a timeline throughout each decade. So you'll see, like, you know, what her childhood was like, because that's something that I can have that perspective of. And then you see what it was like once her parents passed. And then, you know, 
no, she's no longer in school, but she started her business and now she's running her businesses and then she's losing some parts of herself and she's, she's gaining a husband and losing a husband and gains a husband. It's, it's a lot. And so right. emotionally, it's a lot as well. And so I'm going to include a lot of those aspects from different things, from recordings and not notes that I took and everything will be cite, um, cited and people will be able to fact check everything and I'm going to um, send in certain photos or different things to like, you know, people in Smithsonian and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So those can be included in archives and, you know, get down to the bottom of, you know, the tax record situation so that we can find out, you know, I'm um, researching to to see when she first filed like this, the taxes and the amount, because then that'll confirm, you know, the year of when she was a millionaire. That's another important document that people would love to see. So that's going to be included in there. So. Once all these years and everything is confirmed, you have the timeline and the way it's orchestrated. You know, I don't have a correct, I don't have like a proper title for it. But right now, okay. the the way I call it, I just call it life as a legacy. So okay. to me, life as a legacy, this is my perspective of what it's like to be a legacy. And then we're going to flash back into her time period and see what she went through. Okay. Right. And so to to me it's kind of going to be like a, a narration type of feel you know it's, it's going to be a that's different cool. type of vibe you know what i mean that's it's, cool it's, i'm a writer i love writing i study psychology so i was a girl who would write your paper if need be you know so <laughs> i do love writing um and so and, and and i'm a big reader so i love i love the mystery in books and so um i love and i love the drama in books so i'm not here to dramatize it but i want to make it emotional i want you to feel it you know when her when when her husband jumped out of their two story house and screamed, those people are trying to kill me. You know, I want you to feel that moment. Okay. Okay. Because when I read that newspaper clipping that they wrote that, I was like, wow. He yelled that right. like, help me. These people are trying to kill me. But then you jump. But the, the building is not that tall, so you don't die. You just hurt yourself. What are you okay? Right. <laughs> no, you're not okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're not okay. But it's yeah. it's all right. Right. But it's it's something to learn, though. And it's a part of the whole story of what made her who she was and how she was able to persevere and just just growing as a human being and thriving as well. Because sometimes you got to go through a little something, something to thrive and just to 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 learn how to get better. But okay. that, that's cool. Now, what, what's also cool, see, uh, I was just going to say I studied psychology at FAMU as well. So I get where you're coming from. So you love yeah. the analyzation and I love the, like understanding the human brain. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know what's enticing to people, you know, and you know what's kind of, you know, will cause people to pull back a little bit. So it's like even the way I start this story is going to be beautiful, you know, because I want to start it off brilliant and then kind of reel y'all back in. I love that vibe, you know. Good. I love Good. I love when someone kind of like um, starts with the ending, but then flashes back. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of how um, I'm going to depict it, uh, because I feel like I want to start with what everybody's familiar and, and make that, you know, very eloquent. And then when you see how everything's intertwined through the family aspect mm -hmm. and then we get into her actual life, you're going to be like, oh, wow. So, yes, I love it. I love I love the art of storytelling. I'm excited to actually be putting out my first. Um, well, it may, it may not be my first body of work because I'm writing. Um, a poetry book with my my grandmother, my mom's mother. Um, okay. that, that may come out on Mother's Day. So it won't be my first body of work, but it will be uh, my first major like contact. Uh, and I'm excited for, for that major piece because I'm working on establishing my own publishing company because I do want to write more books. And like I said, right. the first book that I write for her will be just on her life. But then the second book will be focused just on the school because I have, you know, her personal assistance information. I have old students information. And so that perspective is deep as well. You know, when you talk about yeah. the rooftop garden that she had to to grow okay. all her herbs to create things for her products. You know what I mean? Things like that. And and people working all throughout the college. And you know, you have people who, who run the front desk and and people who this it's just so much. I'm over here about to go into a tangent all the way left. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the books are gonna depict a great reflection of Annie Malone. And I'm very excited for this fall. We will definitely have something. Yes. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm definitely going to be on the lookout. And I will say, 
I have this platform and I have another podcast platform. Let me know how I can help and be a part of this. We're gonna, yes. We can help you promote the book and get the stories out because look, we, that's what we're here for. That's what me and my, my partners, that's what we built these platforms Thank so we you. can get these stories out for our people. So we'll, we'll make sure we stay in touch so we can help be a part of you getting more information out about your books and just everything that you have going on. So. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> of course. I'll definitely keep you guys up to date and we'll definitely make sure you get a copy of that book for sure, guys. Cool, cool. I appreciate it. Um now I the Poro. Can yes. you can you help people understand the the meaning behind the name and why she used that name for her for her school? Yes. Sorry, switching your pods. Sorry. <laughs> One, one AirPod's about to die. It's all right. All right, air it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Poro. Um, so Poro is a West African term um, meaning strength and wisdom, right? And so um, the meaning of Poro. And so, I, and you know what's interesting? I, I was taught, you know, that that's why she chose the name, but then other historians told me that they read that she cho they chose the name because um, of her Annie's first husband's last name was Pope, and then her sister Laura's husband was Robert, and they came together and made the P O and the R O from their names, and they thought that was a thing. My family, we just thought that it's because she just researched the term and. That's what she liked the meaning of. So, mm -hmm. um, people studying in history, you can see you may you may find both ways, and I'm still researching both ways um, because that is a cool aspect um, of both sisters coming together and combining their names for Poro. But it is also West African term that means strength and wisdom, and I do believe that that is what she embodied. She was very strong and she was very wise, and um, everything down to you know the last symbol on her canister to the last chemical in her products was all used with the wisest decisions she could make because it was all something that was meant to be beneficial. And the best part about it was it was beneficial for our people, you know, especially when they were making things in that time period, you couldn't go into like a store and find, you know, a product for you, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's a difficult thing. And a lot of people don't understand that frustration. Um, and men, you know, men kind of understand when you're shopping for male clothes, the struggle. I do hear this because I always have brothers. I'm the only girl. So, you know, men always say it's so hard to find male clothes. Yeah. Girls have it so easy. You have all those little stores. But guys have to spend so much money to get decent clothes. <laughs> so if you can think about that frustration, think about finding proper hygiene products that were good for mm -hmm. you. You know, that, that, that can be frustrating as well because that's your piece, you know being clean being fresh and so the fact that she was able to do that for the people and it wasn't just for for women it was for men as well okay because okay. hello she taught chuck berry you know people don't know that chuck berry from st louis he had the bomb hair okay he was a student at Poro. yes yes he was he, and, yes he yes he was <laughs> you know what i i learned about i learned that chuck berry was was into cosmetology but i didn't know that there was a connection with with Poro. Yes, he was he was a student of Annie Malone's. And you know, Nelly is is gonna be Chuck Berry. He's gonna portray Chuck Berry. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yes, be, I've been okay. seeing I've been seeing people in St. Louis posting that nonstop. So I feel like that is a thing because they're like, oh yeah. Cause you know Nelly from St. Louis. I'm like, St. Louis guy is gonna play St. Louis legend. Like, yes, St. Louis legend. <laughs> Everybody's excited. So that's, and that, that's the joy I want. And you know what's another thing that's very frustrating? And I'm just going to speak on this one little tangent. Go ahead, say your thing. I do get thoroughly annoyed when we can have wonderful, just immaculate male projects on beautiful black men, but we tarnish the projects of black women. Okay. Because even Harriet wasn't up to its standard. Okay. Now let me get started on that one. Yeah, don't let me get started on that. <laughs> but but I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm with you. Once again, if we're yeah, going to tell our to own Andy stories, Moses, yes. but tell yeah. stories. <laughs> tell it right. Tell it right. But no, nah, I'm I'm with you on that. But um, 
And the reason why I wanted you to explain that, and just so people can really understand the significance and the importance of the Poro Institute. Um, and I encourage all people to go do their research on Andy Malone and the the Poro Institute and just learn a lot more information about it. Um, could you mention um, the, the titles of those two books that you showed us earlier, mention those titles again? Yes, um, A Friend to All Mankind. I'm sorry, I don't know. We can see. Okay, but friend, this no, is man, written man. by John Whitfield. Yes. Okay. And um, this is available on Amazon. And then this book was written by my cousin. So this is Andy Malone's nephew. Um, he's on the back. He's on the back of the book. But um, this is a book he wrote. Um, the hidden story of Andy Termo Malone. And so um, his book, his book. If you like to purchase that, you can DM me. Um, at Sasha Turnbo. Um, I'm not sure if his book is on Amazon. I had to call him. That's so bad. See if you can find it on Amazon. I'm, I feel like he might put it on Amazon, but if he did not, I, I could definitely get that those books too. Um, cool. But they are on his website as well. Um, I wish that his website was on the top of my head right now. I love you, cousin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but John Whitfield's book is definitely on um, on Amazon. And um, Black Fortunes also featured a loan, and it features the first um, first six millionaires that um, were born from slavery. So, like their last, their parents were slaves, or they were slaves, and then they became millionaires. And so that's a dope book because he even, you know, he highlights Annie Malone, and then the next chapter he highlights Madam Walker, and he has the statement, you know, just because you know you fly your riches doesn't mean you have the riches first. And I just read that. I said, well, come on, Mr. Wills. Okay, look, because if that's not a word. Look, all you got to do, your re do your research because I found she was worth, Andy Malone was worth like $13, $14 million in the early 1900s. And I'm just like getting people to wrap your mind around this. Worth 13 to $14 million in the early 1900s. And that's, that's billions in this time. Like right now, that's that would be billions if you compare that money of what she had then to what it would be today. Because like what? She had yeah. one of the first Rolls Royces. Like, are you kidding me? That's why I said, sis, don't worry. I'm gonna get a Rolls Royce for the family just and I'm gonna name it after you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Because we need those back in the family. We need more yeah. roles in the family. So there you go. um she she did a lot of great things. And and that's the thing about her, like I said, one thing I want people to also learn about her is that the truth in her story and why many people may not know of her legacy is that she invested her money, okay? She believed in property, okay? She believed in just overall, just financial freedom, okay? So she, she, she donated, yes, but she bought these buildings and she, um, <laughs> And and she bought these these, these plots of land. Sorry, and <laughs> I'm right. getting text. I'm putting my phone out to disturb. Yeah, all right. Uh, but but she she invested in, in these properties, and and that is what's so beneficial about what she did. You know, people can tell you whatever they want to tell you and think whatever they want about your pockets, but when you're buying, you know, a half million dollar building, left and right. And then you're hiring workers to now come, you know, facilitate that building. Mm -hmm. That's that's a whole nother flex. So at the end of the day, it's like she she was very, very powerful. And and I love the way that she I love how she poured her money in, into mm -hmm. the community because those buildings weren't for her. You know, those products weren't for her. Everything was always for the people. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if it was for her, you would have she would have been a reflection of her riches, and people can can say about her. You know, they can only talk about what she physically did. They can't tell you that she had the latest of this or the flashiest of that. You know, she gave diamond rings. You know, she loved jewelry. We love jewelry. You know, I have I have my pieces. I have family jewelry that I wear too. But you know, she was like, oh wow, you've done so hard. When when have you ever done so good in a job? And your boss is like, oh, here's a nice chain. You know, here's something for you in the hair world. Not this is not the music world because you just signed a contract and they want to give you a check right. or something. This right. is this is the beauty world, and you've done your due diligence as a graduate. You know, or you know what she also did? she bought a house. If you use your worker's money to buy a house, she would donate. She would get you a nice gift. Wow. 
So that's the thing. She rewarded you for working hard. Oh, you just bought a house? Oh, well, let me give you a nice little $20,000 then so you can furnish it. That was her vibe. You know, that's, that's it's respectable. Yeah. She wanted she just wanted to see her people win. She just wanted to see you thrive. She wanted you to succeed and know that the struggles that come with succeeding are okay because it'll all pay off. You know, right. you're going to struggle. It's going to be hard, yes, but you're gonna feel better later. You know, it's just like working out, it's gonna hurt right now, you're gonna sweat. But later you'll go home, you'll shower, you'll feel good, and then you'll be happy when you're laying on the beach and you're and you went to the gym last year, you know, like <laughs> Exactly. It's, it's the back yeah. work. <laughs> but I mean, she was a true leader. She was a, that's everything you you explained to me. Leadership. That's what real leaders do. They inspire people to go out and be their best. And that's it, it, that's exactly what she was, because you can see the fruits of her labor and the people who learn from her went on to be great themselves. So. Yes, it is. So yes. how can people get in contact with you? So somebody see this interview, they're like, that's a she got a great personality. I want to interview her. What's the best way for people to contact you? Um, I can be reached on Instagram. I only have Instagram and Facebook. I don't have Twitter. Um, my name is Sasha Turnbow, just like how it reads. And then um also via email. My email is Sasha the letter J and then turnbow at gmail.com. Um, with email, please use the time. I know even with you, I have to send you a couple of things because I always, it's so funny doing this stuff because with me, it's like, I want you to understand. It's like, this is like my side hustle. So it's like, I also have a man hustle, I have a side hustle. And it's like, yeah, we make it all happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like the after yeah. hour, just, just like, it's like, what time is it? I don't know, but all I know is Friday night and I'm working. <laughs> Look at him. And I'm working. Right, right, exactly. That's but that's yeah, me. Sasha, Sasha, Sasha J Turnbo at okay. gmail.com and then Instagram. You can DM me. Um, and I'm I'm opening up to to share more, to talk more, and I would love to to be a part of anything. I would love to read books, people who write on her, people who do bodies of work um on her. If you have children, I know a, a woman who wrote a beautiful children's book you can find on um on Amazon. If you look up um, Annie Malone children's books, you know, there's an ABC book, a one, two, three book, an activity coloring book, a shapes book. It's very beautiful collection. Um, and that woman who created it is Ruta from St. Louis. Um, I even did an interview that aired today on NBC St. Louis. Um, that, that's on my Instagram page. If you look at it, you'll see them featured in there. And um, Madison Walker's granddaughter was also in the interview as well. So if you tune into that, um, you can see some things and then in my Instagram bio, my link tree, I also have an email sign up. So if people would like to um, be the first to receive a newsletter when I launch the company to release the book, you know, over the summer, you can start to put your information. You know, I set that up just because so many people wanted to stay in touch. So you can put your information in the email list and and I'll be able to send you some things and let you know that things are coming out and you'll be able to get different deals, you know because you know you're a part of our little group and then once i become more you know mainstream with everything you know we'll have the the proper subscribe list in our own little hey. army of uh and people you know <laughs> hey i signed up for the email so y'all might as well sign up too go ahead and join me join everybody else and and sign up but that is a great way to build your tribe yes. though so yeah um this was it this was exciting um this was amazing i love your energy i love just the passion that you have. Like I said, if there's Thank any you. way, any Thank way you. I can support you, help you out, let me know. Let's make sure we stay in touch. Also, I, I'm going to send you the video I did on Annie Malone's life. I'm going to send you the story that I did. So, you, Please, you know, yes, I have to give, see it. Yeah. And so, and I kind of, I kind of put mine together kind of like songs. So I, I do my narration with some music behind it because I'm hip hop. So I like to jam. So I put it together like that. So I'll I send it, it to you. Hey, you tell me what you think. But hey, um, look, on the shows of giants, this is what we do here, right? So we 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 bring great people to give you great information. And that way we can never say we didn't know. 
we can never say we didn't know. We can never say we were, we were not exposed to the information because if lo and behold, I'm going to do my damnedest to make sure that we know who our heroes are. And so thank you, Sasha, for stopping by and, and chatting it up with me. And hopefully this is the first of many that we can and we can continue this in the future. So for everybody, y'all go support her. Yes. Get, sign up for the email list. Go to Instagram, her Instagram and click that link. In the bio, sign up for the email list and the link tree. Follow her, support everything she has. Make sure y'all support me on Patreon. Get the books, go to my website, get my books. And this is how we do it. So we'll see y'all next time. Yeah, get Peace. his book. Uh, <laughs> see y'all later.